Hi everybody, it's Dr. Sherry Kaplan from Vitality MD doing another session on Ask Your Doctor. Um, this week I'm actually going to talk about uh, depression. Um, kind of November to March is a big time then uh, we sort of see an increase in people complaining of feeling depressed or blue. Um, and I sort of just want to talk a little bit about um, Vitality MD's approach to depression. So, you know, we've heard a lot of patients in the past sort of come in and that they have a history of depression and, um, you know, they've seen their regular doctor and often they're put on an antidepressant or an anti-anxiety medicine depending on if they're presenting more with depression or anxiety. And some patients do really well on them and other patients aren't. And, um, you know, so we set, tend to see a lot of patients who are kind of looking for an alternative approach to um, help treat depression. And I always sort of say that depression is an end game. It's not necessarily what the cause is because it ends up that depression can be caused by many different things. And so our goal is to look at potentially what are those underlying causes. So an example of what may contribute to depression. So you can have low B12, low zinc, um, be deficient in other nutrients nutrients and basically the body has a difficult time uh, making neurotransmitters so kind of replacing those nutrients um, are helpful. Um, looking at gut inflammation so there's now a lot of information about the gut brain connection and in fact we make more neurotransmitters in our gut than we do in our brain and so there's a lot of people who have inflammatory bowel um, you know so they you know may have Crohn's or ulcerative colitis and that may contribute to depression. Also the way we we eat, you know, the standard American diet, or people are now calling it the mad diet because it makes everybody mad and moody. Um, that again, the way we're eating can cause inflammation in our gut, um, specifically. Uh, Sorry, specifically eating um, gluten seems to be a big irritant. So not just if you're gluten sensitive or have celiac, but now we kind of know that gluten is an irritant to the gut lining and causes those tight junctions to be leaky in everybody. The question is just for how long and how much we're eating. And so that can sort of stimulate our immune system um, and cause inflammation. So often one of the things that I do tell people is when they're having a problem with their mood um, to sort of avoid gluten and, you know, give it some time to see if that helps. Um, other causes of uh, depression actually is underlying celiac disease. Um, and uh, basically, you know, stress, not sleeping, um, a whole bunch of things can affect our neurotransmitters and we also know about our gut microbiome um, that you know having a big shift in uh, bad bacteria can also release uh, chemicals or toxins that cause inflammation and also cause our mood to be off so really cleaning up our diet is um, you know uh, really important in treating depression and often we say let food be thy medicine um, and um, you know, some people talk about food sensitivities that may contribute to depression. You know, there's a lot of genetics involved in depression and sometimes looking at, um, you know, family history and also doing genetic testing may help. Um, we're learning about, you know, certain SNPs that um, increase the degradation of certain neurotransmitters. Um, so that sort of predisposes us, um, you know, if someone's uh, sleep deprived that also can contribute to depression. So so basically our approach is that we try to look at um, many different things that can contribute to depression and try to correct them. Um, then in terms of the way we treat them, we want to improve people's diets, we want to replace deficient nutrients, a lot of hormonal imbalances can also play with depression so we know low testosterone, low estrogen, low progesterone, low DHEA has plenty of studies showing that when they're low that can contribute to depression so balancing your hormones is really important and that again when you have really high sugars it causes inflammation um, and also that can contribute to uh, mood problems so stabilizing sugars eating healthy uh, incorporating all the colors of the rainbow in our diet and avoiding uh, trans fats and processed foods is also really big uh, piece of the puzzle um, we try to get people to exercise there's tons of studies on exercise improving mood um, you know meditation 
meditating um, is really important and we do a lot of that here. We have meditation classes and one-on-one -on -one sessions. Um, and uh, detoxing, so um, you know, actually again, some people are genetically prone to accumulate toxins over time and can't excrete them. And uh, Dr. Uh, Amen, who does PET scans, has shown that people who have to high toxic load can also have a toxic brain and that may pre present with depression. So again, we will kind of like to look at uh, people's ability to detox. And so we do IV therapy, we do detox saunas, massage helps with that, and sweating through exercise. So we have a very, um, you know, uh, multi-pronged approach on treating, diagnosing, and then treating depression. So come check us out at Vitality MD. If you like what you heard, uh, like us on Facebook, share us. Um, and if you have any questions that you would like to me to answer, um, please send them to info at Vitality MD. Have a good night. Thanks.